Oh my gosh, I love it. Hey guys, I'm about to go in to see Nurse Chelsea again. We're targeting this area. So we talked about radius. I'm not sure if that's what I wanna do. I'm gonna to talk to her about options. You can see that I'm losing volume in here. I also wanna get back to doing Sculptra, I think, and that will help thicken this skin a little bit. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go see what she says. Back with Nurse Chelsea. The HA filler that we would do there, a mobile area on top of a muscle doesn't get biostimulators too much okay. like ra radius or sculpture you go close to the area with the sculpture however looking at you i think it's a volume thing like we do need some hyaluronic acid filler to pump pump that out if that is your concern sort of falling in of the mid face as the fat pads are being reduced not as much um structure underneath and so it yeah. starts to hang and our bones do tend to shrink as we age as well we get a little bit of like a sort of like osteoporosis yeah. type of thing hormones are like little messaging key and lock systems and they really do determine how tissue is redeposited in our body of course you need the building blocks you need to be healthy but estrogen plays a big role in the deposition of bone and certain materials our body's continuously breaking down and rebuilding constantly that's how we get new skin we get new skin every 40 to 60 days so it's like it breaks it down and then we get new and it breaks it down and we get new and when we're young it brings new at the same rate as it breaks it down but as we age it starts to drift a little bit yeah. and so we see loss volume loss bone loss and they contribute to things changing so i would do ha dermal filler in this area to give you the plumpness reduce the shadowing yeah but more of a long-term thing would be the sculpture okay so if we could do both not necessarily today but spread them out and have a plan that ha filler is more like it works really nicely, but it, it can also be sort of a band-aid. It's, it's yeah. you know, what we got to do now and will last you a year or so, depending on which yeah. product we use. So for the marionette lines, I look at where there is a shadow and I mark it. So always from the modiolus or the corner of the mouth and sort of pulling down, I can see that the skin starts to take a divot there. Mm -hmm. And then I go down this way where it start, actually probably starts stops being a divot about there. And then this is my focus zone for in filling. So I'll go in here with the cannula up here and I will leave long beads or fanning in there. So this is my modulators for the Mentellas. I'm gonna have you stick your bottom left out so I can see where the, see it's bunching up there. Mm -hmm. So really, and you can relax that. Just make sure the muscle is there. It kind of has two bands, one on either side. So typically in depth that way. How are you doing, Julie? Good? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's there. And I'm tough. You are tough. Mm -hmm. And then for the upper face, we're gonna take care of the cosmetic aspect of it first. Yep, so relax. We're gonna put just a few units, five units across to take care of that. And then the rest is gonna go in the hairline. So at about two thirds of the way up the frontalis, there's actually a junction. So the role of the frontalis muscle is to elevate the eyebrows. But there is a junction right here where this muscle actually continues, but the top portion of it actually pulls the scalp forward. And oftentimes that's a culprit for these tension headaches. So we gotta go up above that junction. And I see good success in my patients. They're not gonna get any cosmetic effect from this, but I do see good uh, nice results of reducing tension headaches in the hairline and I'm doing just two units at a time here there we go and then I want Julie to report back to me in 14 days that her headaches are reduced yeah and there's many other areas that we can go temporalis muscle but this is a nice easy start mm -hmm. so we like it in this area to stay natural so as you're moving your mouth it's able to stretch and strain with you also using the cannula to attempt to reduce bruising and avoid the facial or angular artery here. I have a question. Yeah. So that's going to take care of this. Do we, do we just leave yeah. this alone for so now? Or? I would like to leave it alone. So okay. I'll tell you something. People see the nasolabial fold and then it continues down to the marionette line. Usually I like to take care of the marionette line in, a, in the bottom sort of third of the nasolabial fold. So I might go up into there. And the reason for that is that I like to maintain some dimension Me too. in the feminine face. Mm -hmm. If we completely get rid of all of those peaks and valleys, you will look one dimensional and yeah. it's not feminine and it is not pretty. So yeah. I would like to tackle that with Sculptra and get that boosted back up again. We can do an injection there, but for this session, I would just like to go in this portion. Okay. And usually that's enough to keep people happy. Okay. So if we can take care of most of it, most people are happy, and then they also appreciate that natural aspect of maintaining mm -hmm. some of our femininity. Yeah. 
And I like that we do a step at a time so that we can see the results. Exactly, it's all about sculpting. Mm -hmm. A sculptor will always stand back from their sculpture. Yes. And look and see and take time to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our entry point. I like to pinch the skin up. Make sure you get through the dermis. And there we go. And they sometimes don't bleed, so it's hard to find it. Okay, so we're gonna use our entry point here. Go up. And tell me if you have any discomfort. You might hear or feel a little, couple little pops going through the fascia. I like to keep my finger at the modiola so I know where the tip of it is. And just leave some and already it looks better. Hear that? No, actually. You didn't hear the squishing? No. So that did well. I could do some more. I'm gonna get up in here a little more. Here we go. Won't that, that help pop my mm -hmm. smile up a little bit too? It could, yeah, if we put uh, a little bit more here in the corner to give it. Usually I would go in with more of a cross hatching technique to do that, um, and we would need a, a needle for that. Looks good. It's, yeah, actually, now that you moved, I actually see a little spot I could probably do a little better. Go in a little bit. Okay. That's great. So like that's to me that's nice and smoothed out. I'll go do some on the other side and I might have come back with a little bit more. Okay. So it already looks better. Yeah. It's just smooth. So yeah. from here to here it's smooth rather than going in. I think we could probably put a little bit more in there, but I'll see what we have okay. left after the other side. I love technology. <laughs> and a good injector. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that makes such a difference. Introduce her again, the ouchy part. You see a little vessel right there, so obviously we would avoid that. And a little poke. It changes the texture of the skin, eh? Like having hyaluronic acid. Yeah. Then, yeah, think about the water. It absor absorbs 10 times its weight in water, so it's mm -hmm. pulling water, so it actually makes your, your skin yeah. feel plumper. Yeah. I'm actually going to get you to stay there so I can okay. see. Sometimes if I want to be as precise as I possibly can be, I have to go in with a needle. Tell me what you think. Oh my gosh. Isn't that so much better? So, so I actually much better. now think that that side's better, so I'm going to go back here. Yeah. Okay, relax your face. And I'm going to go up into the corner here. We'll use the same hole. One side always takes a bit more. Yeah, it's, it's, just it's this it. side is yeah. the worst, I think. Turn your head, I just want to show Marie something. Mm -hmm. See this little dip over where the skin starts yeah. to hang over? Mm -hmm. We never fill above that because if we put filler here, mm -hmm. it will actually accentuate that okay. or exaggerate that. Okay. So we're always staying below this, this little line. Okay. You actually can see my cannula right mm -hmm. there. The patient might be able to feel on the inside if you just feel with your tongue. Mm -hmm. Can you feel it? Not so much? Mm -hmm. Good, I did a good job. <laughs> so, but it can, and that's okay. Um, it will integrate itself, so it will flatten out and smooth out. Um, if I don't see it from the front, I tend to not massage it because I don't want to lose some of that volume that we've just attempted to make. I'm feeling there, and I, I really don't feel it, but the define feels really good, and so I'm not going to massage anything out, but if it felt clumpy, you would definitely want to do that. And we're done. I love it. How does it feel? Take a peek. So this, there was a two marionette lines there that bothered her and so naturally filled. I think yeah. that's great. Yeah. We could also make another appointment. We could go up and do a little bit more um, up into the nasal labial fold, but let's do less is more as, yeah. a, as a rule and uh, start with that.